We want to go higher and higher in our relationship with God, but the way you go higher in the kingdom is you go lower. If you try to go higher, God puts you lower. If you try to take the best seat, He walks you down to the last seat. If you take the last seat, He walks you up to the first seat. One of my life verses, God gave me this verse many, many years ago. I couldn't even, I can't even tell you how long ago. And I was at Wayne Drain's church. Many of you probably remember Wayne Drain. He comes every year for our prophetic presbytery. He's been doing that since the first year of the church. And um, I'd heard he had a prophetic gift. And so they were praying over me before I spoke. And Wayne said, I have a word for you, Pastor Robert, if that's okay. And I said, yes. So this is what he said. He says, have not I given you a life verse that you've only told your wife about? And I remember thinking, now this is pretty interesting. There's 31,103 verses in the Bible. If he says the verse, I'm gonna know this is a word from God. And he said, it's Micah 6, 8. And here's the verse. He has shown you, O man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? But to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. Well, I knew it was a word from God through Wayne for me. But that verse, to do justly, to love mercy, to be a gracious and kind person, to do what's right, to be kind, to be merciful, and to walk humbly. So we're talking about humility, walking humbly, all right? So here's the first point, the highest position. I'm gonna tell you in the Bible what's the highest position position in the Bible, the highest calling that a person can achieve or can walk in, the highest calling. Now, most think it's an apostle, but the apostles themselves tell you what the highest position is. Romans chapter one, verse one, Paul, a servant of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle. Notice he says what he's called to do, but he tells us what he is. He's a servant. Philippians 1.1, 1, 1, Paul and Timothy, servants of Christ Jesus. James 1.1, 1, 1, James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. 2 Peter 1.1, 1, 1, Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ. The highest position for believers is a servant. Think about when Jesus came to this earth, what did he do? He said, I didn't come to be served. I came to serve. Philippians 2 says he took upon himself the form of a servant. He became a servant. That's the highest position you can have in the kingdom of God. The problem is that we get so concerned and so fixated on what our position is, what our title is, or what we have, or what we're supposed to do, or what we're supposed to accomplish, or what we've done in the past, or we get very, very fixated on uh, what God's called us to do, and we want everybody to know, hey, this is my calling. This is what I'm called to do. Well, I can tell you what all of us are called to do. We're all called to serve. We're all called to be servants. Um, I, I've, had, I've known of people that uh, in workplaces have demanded certain titles. They've demanded, I want to, certain title. Can I tell you something? It really doesn't matter what my title is. What I do is I'm a servant. I'm going to serve people. That's what Jesus did. Who has the name above all names, he comes to serve. That's the title that Paul and Peter and James and Timothy, that's the title that they took upon themselves. Your identity is not in what you do. It's not in your title. It's in whose you are. It's also not in what you own. Here's an incredible scripture. If you've never seen this scripture, I want you to meditate on it. Luke 12, verse 15. For one's life does not consist in the abundance of the things he possesses. That's Jesus. One's life does not consist in the abundance of the things he possesses. So it consists in Jesus. We're gonna get a little bit more into that in a moment. Uh, we have some high school friends. Four, there's four couples. We went to high school, Debbie and I, with two of the guys and two of the girls. And now they all have spouses. 
and we get together every year. We, we weren't able to last year because of COVID, but we're hoping we can this year. But we get together every year for an extended weekend, and we just have fellowship and fun. They all love the Lord. They're great folks. So when we started doing this, you got to remember, we knew two of the guys, two of the girls, because we went to high school with them. We knew some of the others, but a couple of the spouses I didn't know. So there's one of the guys there, and so I said to him, uh, just trying to get to know him, I said, so what do you do? And he said, I'm a trash man. And I said, oh, well, um, do you like it? He said, I do. I like it a lot. And I said, well, how long you been doing it? He said, almost 20 years now. And I could see then some of the other couples that knew him because they all live in the same city. And Debbie and I are in the Metroplex now. They're in the city where we grew up in. And I could see them starting to smile, you know, because I'm asked his questions. Do you like it? And, you know, things, you know, how long you been doing it? And so then I said to him, well, do you have to, you know, get up early in the morning? Because my, you know, understanding of trash people is if you forget to push your trash out, they come right before you remember. That's, it's, that's, that's been my experience. So, so I'm thinking you gotta get up really early and get started because whatever it is, I'm not quite there yet or I'm running down the driveway, you know. So, uh, so I said, so do you have to get up early, you know, to do this? He said, no. He said, I get in the office about eight normally. And then I could see him smiling. And then one of the other guys said to me, he's the manager of the whole trash facility the, uh, for all of East Texas. And uh, he has employees and he has a multi-million dollar budget and you know, all this stuff, okay. But here's what I really respect about that guy. And I know him really well now. His identity is not in what he does. He didn't have to tell me I'm the boss. I got people reporting to me and I oversee millions of dollars. He said, I'm a trash man. It's kind of like Paul, who writes a third of the New Testament. And someone says, what do you do? He says, I'm a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what I do. So that's the highest position. Here's number two, the highest place. The highest place. Mark chapter nine, I, I love this passage, verse 33. Then he, speaking of Jesus, came to Capernaum. And when he was in the house, he asked them, what was it you disputed among yourselves on the road? But they kept silent, for on the road they had disputed among themselves who would be the greatest. This is the first pastor's conference right here that ever took place. <laughs> and he sat down, called the 12, and said to them, if anyone desires to be first, he shall be last of all and servant of all. You need to understand that uh, success in the kingdom is not how many people you can get under you. It's how many people you can get over you. It's how many people you can serve. I'm, I'm very um, adamant that we give God the glory at Gateway Church. You, you won't hear me say things like, I did this, and I decided, and I did this, and I'm this. You'll hear me talk about, we have this. The elders and I made this decision. The staff and I made the decision. When we made the decision to go online, Todd, Pastor Todd, Pastor Thomas, and I were making a decision for the good of the congregation. But I don't get up and say, I did this and I did that. And it's not that I'm doing it so much on purpose, it's just normal, it's just natural because we build the kingdom of God together. We have prison campuses. We have a campus in Jackson Hole. We do these things, not I. Humility is at the core of the values of Gateway Church. Because why, what do we have to be proud of? God's doing it all. We're simply cooperating with him. God's the one that's moving. God's the one that's working. God's the one that's opening prison doors. You can't open 450 prison doors in a few months, but God can, and we can walk through that door. Philippians 2, 3, let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind. I love this word lowly because this is the ox. The ox is called the lowly servant. In lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better 
than himself. So, and then it goes on to tell us, this is what Jesus did. And then I want you to notice, because we're talking about the highest place, so I'm gonna get to why I'm calling it this. I want you to notice, when Jesus esteems himself lower than others, what happens? In verse nine, it says, therefore God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name. Now remember this creature, this, this four-faced creature goes higher and higher. And that's what I wanna talk to you about. We wanna go higher and higher in our relationship with God, but the way you go higher in the kingdom is you go lower. If you try to go higher, God puts you lower. If you try to take the best seat, he walks you down to the last seat. If you take the last seat, he walks you up to the first seat. It's all opposite in the kingdom of God. If you wanna have authority, you get under authority. If you wanna receive more to be able to help people, you give more to be able to help people. If you, here's a big opposite. If you want to live, die. It's all opposite in the kingdom. So if you want to help more people, then you learn to serve more people. You don't put yourself up at the top, you put yourself at the bottom, which is what Jesus did. But then he exalts you. Look at these scriptures, Job 5, 11. He sets on high those who are lowly. Luke 1, he has put down the mighty from their thrones and exalted the lowly. Matthew 23, 12. By the way, Jesus said this many times. This is just one time that he said it. Matthew 23, 12. And whoever exalts himself will be humbled. And he who humbles himself will be exalted. If you try to lift yourself up, he says, I'm gonna take you down. If you put yourself down, I'll take you up. In 1 Peter 5, 6. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. Hey everyone, I'm Pastor Robert, and thank you so much for watching my YouTube channel. Be sure to share what God is teaching you in the comments below so that it might encourage others. And click the subscribe button and then tap the bell icon so that you'll be notified every time a new video is posted. And don't forget, you can watch full episodes anytime right here on my YouTube channel. Thanks again for watching.